So what happens when you mix a game that was very well received and yet didn't receive a single Game Awards nomination with a machine that is beloved but also absolutely below standards when it comes to horsepower and hardware? Do you get a broomstick beatdown? Do you get some well-meaning muggle magic? Or do you get a Sorcerer Supreme surprise port that blows everyone out of the water? The truth is, all of them. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force Hogwarts. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hogwarts Legacy is out now on Nintendo Switch and this game has been delayed many, many times. It was delayed for one of two reasons. Either they really cared and wanted to make it great or they couldn't make it work at all. They opted to go for a real version of the game. No cloud version this time around, despite Hogwarts Legacy being one of the biggest open worlds and a pretty impressive game in terms of scope and scale when it released earlier on PlayStation 5, Xbox, PC, etc. It received great scores there in the mid eights and some nines saying like, hey, this is the true Harry Potter RPG we've always dreamed of, a great student fantasy and a wonderful world to explore. A world that would be amazing on Switch to take with you, yet would it run? Would it work? Warner Brothers, in their coy fashion, didn't want to reveal any gameplay or any screenshots up to the very last minute, which usually means uh, not good. Reviews? Not there. I don't even know if they sent out review copies or not for this game, which tells me we're in trouble. We've had third-party games that have really needed day one patches, day 20 patches, we have games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that don't ever get the correct patches, but Hogwarts Legacy drops. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful mess, okay? This game should not play as well as it does on Switch, but it does. It works until it doesn't, but it always does. So here's a game that has no business being great on Switch, and it starts off looking rough. There are some ugly early sequences in this game where you're like, oh my gosh, they used a super flat texture. Sometimes I felt like I was playing a PSP game with how downgraded things were. And yet I would see those scenes and they'd be right back up against a scene where it looked way too good for Switch. It looked like the texture was at a quality level I did not expect from my Switch. Playing it portably, that's the way everyone's gonna kind of want to play, but I feel like it was even grainier, like a pixelized filter placed over this game. And maybe with the absolute scale and majesty of Hogwarts itself, this is a game meant for TV play. So I docked my Switch and I said, okay, this game has some hideous textures, but it also has some beautiful scenes. This game has some buzzy pixelization, but it also has incredible detail and a lot of animation. This Hogwarts Legacy game is the prime example of how the Switch both sucks and how the Switch is stellar. The visual presentation of Hogwarts Legacy is really downgraded. It is reduced. The characters, the faces in particular, don't really ever look good. And yet I did have moments where I was very impressed. There's lighting sequences and different cutscenes as well as just environmental shots that look really, really nice. And they do a great job of incorporating the entire experience of Hogwarts Legacy into our little old Switch. It really is a mind-blowing slash mind-numbing experience to see terrible wall textures that just make you think of bad memories from generations ago and then enter a room full of majestic marble pillars that look way too good to be running on Switch. You'll be standing and staring at a fire with the most pathetic flame texture, and then the very next scene is a plant rendered wonderfully. Some would describe this inconsistency as a problem and an issue and a bad thing. But given where our baseline is for Switch, I'm actually impressed. I feel like the developers managed to focus on the things that your eyes are drawn to and that would impact gameplay and interactivity most. The spells look good. Some of the big sequences like when you enter the dining hall, look good. But then things like grass, yeah, it's really flat and this tree has no depth to it. It is a bit jumbly and sometimes it does pull you out of the experience. I don't think this is the perfect Hogwarts fantasy you may have had when you first heard about this game, but 
it is running on Switch. And I do applaud them for finding ways to balance the load of what this game was pushing onto the Switch so that some stuff does look really good and will bring a smile to your face. You'll walk into some rooms and be like, how did they pull that off? Especially after that last dude's face looked ancient. And then there's a sequence that just has some objects that look marvelous right after you walk past a whole library full of books that looked really bad. Again, I don't think this inconsistency is bad. I actually think it's impressive and good. The alternative would have been everything looks bad. Here though, they did somehow find a way to emphasize certain elements, certain parts, and in my opinion, the best sequences, the most interactive elements, the gameplay stuff, and they made it look a lot better than I anticipated. Remember, this is not a watered down version. This is not a cut down version. This is not a Switch exclusive version. This is Hogwarts Legacy that ran on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and somehow Grandma's Toaster is here playing it. I don't know, the toaster is like 20 years old, and somehow it still runs it. But does it run it well? I think that's more important than even the resolution and the fidelity of the visuals. The answer there is hot diggity dog, they did it. We have a case like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet where it doesn't look great and it runs awful. That could have been Hogwarts Legacy. Some rotten textures, some really marvelous textures, and very bad performance. But I think it's impressive that they chose to place the most strain and emphasis on the things that matter most, the gameplay. I was shocked to see the textures of the grass, the textures of the water, but then I fired a spell and okay, we're in business. We're looking VFX'd up here and it doesn't look like it matches. And for some, I think that like disconnect will be more jarring than others, but I actually appreciate it. The things that you're playing the game for, right? The magic, the spells, the interactivity with the world. I think that's the best looking stuff. Yes, the Ravenclaw common room is washed over with a little bit of a blur filter. And yes, those character faces just never live up to anywhere near what they are on the other platforms. But this is Hogwarts Legacy and it purrs. It, it runs incredibly well and that is the true miracle here. So Warner Brothers, despite not advertising heavily this Switch version as a very proficient port, they achieved that. And I find myself wondering why didn't this get more buzz before it dropped as it could be a humongous seller leading right into the holiday season. It's a massive third-party game that saw extreme success on the other consoles and now it enters a Nintendo Switch audience that I feel probably has a whole bunch of Harry Potter fans, young and old, as well as a desire for a big third-party game to sort of play opposite Mario Wonder, which is more of a bite-sized 2D platformer. Everyone should just about be done with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and are ready for the next big adventure. I don't know that that's WarioWare movie. Maybe it is Super Mario RPG, but in terms of modernity, this is the game you want to play. This is a 2023 title that oddly didn't get a single nomination at the Game Awards. From people who have completed it, they think that that is hogwash. Hogwarts deserves better. And from the time I've put into both the PlayStation 5 version and the Switch version, it does seem like a very good game and one that encouraged me to play more. I don't even want to bring up the conversation of like, should you play it elsewhere if you can, because the point of a Switch review is pretty much for people that can only or want to only play it on Switch. Like, it's pretty obvious that if given the choice, where would I rather play it? And I will say that since the advent of the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, the Lenovo Go, it feels a bit more archaic to see the graphics portably when I know that there are pieces of hardware that can put out far better graphics. Like I mentioned, after playing Alan Wake 2 for hours and hours and then going straight into Hogwarts Legacy on the Switch, I did feel like it was PSP level, but Google any PSP screenshot and Hogwarts Legacy is significantly above. And when the combat's going, when the magic is rolling, when you are exposed to the spectacle of the magical sights within the game, it is still a pretty game. It's weird to say that with so many rough textures, but it still manages to artistically, colorfully, lighting, mood, ambiance be a pretty game. And all of that would be for naught if it did not run well, and yet it does run well. And it goes to show that like when a talented team tackles the Switch, they can make something truly incredible. This will go down with games like The Witcher 3 and Doom Eternal as a port that like probably should not work on Switch, yet somehow does very, very well. And so if you're waiting to pick this up on Switch and see if it's worth it. It absolutely is. I don't think there's a scenario where you'll get this 
and feel like, oh my gosh, this sucks, I regret my purchase. You know what the Switch is capable of visually. You know what kind of graphics third-party games get when they come to Nintendo's hybrid console. Five years ago, I would have been floored. I would have been so excited and so absolutely just emboldened for the future of what could be with third-party games. In 2023, I do have to evaluate it with two sort of different viewpoints. One is within the Switch bubble where I say again, like, dang, this is amazing. This is great that we're getting Hogwarts Legacy. It's on the system. It's not cloud. We're not relying on some sort of streaming to get this here with lag and all sorts of issues. Maybe a little bit better graphics, but not going to run great unless your internet is perfect. You have Hogwarts Legacy. It's a big download, but you have it and you have the whole thing and you can take it with you, put it in your TV, play it on the plane, grab it for grandma's house this holiday season. I think it is going to be one of the best and most recommendable Switch games at the end of 2023 because it's doing something that just so many other Switch games can't really do at a scope and scale. Yes, Tears of the Kingdom is there, but what else really is there? And then in terms of like major IP, third-party titles, this is it. Dying Light 2 never never came out on Switch. Remember when that was promised? It, it never did. And we didn't really get a whole lot of massive titles this year. We're still waiting on a Batman Arkham collection that has games from eons ago. Hogwarts Legacy is modern and that is magnificent. And like I said, it's 2018, this comes out, I'm screaming from the rooftops, the Switch is the second coming. But the Switch has already come for many, many years. And so outside of the bubble of the Switch, I say, and pardon my Death Eater, we need to Avada Kedavra this system. There's no real reason that we should be struggling with this level of graphics when we know there are plans and parts that could make this so much better. The Switch 2 needs to happen, and in 2023, I'm sick of being surprised that my little old Switch can muster up the courage to run a big game. I want to be pleasantly pleased that the Switch 2 can run this game well. I don't need it to look as crystal clear as the PS5, but it shouldn't look and give me flashbacks to PSP. I know that's harsh, and I know that's a little bit off base, but you get my point. As a Switch-only owner in the bubble of Nintendo, this is an amazing port. They did a fantastic job, but taking the gaming industry as a whole and what we know about what's possible with handheld portable computers, what's possible with the Switch 2 based on the chipset we believe it to have, it's time. Like, we should not be dealing with this in 2023 and into 2024, and frankly, there's no reason why ports should have to struggle so mightily to make it happen on Switch. Despite this one, overcoming the odds and running like a charm. Makes you really wonder about what the heck goes on with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet over at the Pokemon Company when uh, you got, you know, one frame per second windmills. And here, maybe the texture is still a little bit muddled, but the pages flying through Hogwarts, they flying at the full frame rate. Everything is looking and running pretty darn good. And I'm not going to say that like 100% of the game is flawless and there's not a single frame drop. There probably is at some point with a bigger scene. But even early on with some of the more dynamic encounters, the game plays great. The game runs great. And I have no complaints on that front. I just don't think we should be dealing with the Switch anymore at this point. The good news is, if you don't feel that way, or if you're just happy to have your Switch, or it's your only system, this is a fantastic port. Obviously, looks better elsewhere, but runs, plays great, they did a miracle job, and again, we have a huge open world game that has no business being this good on Switch, doing a fantastic job of being good on Switch. I just don't want to have to be good for Switch when we've had this system for seven or eight years. It's time to just be a good game because it's a good game because it looks good on other platforms and now it looks good on our platform too. I feel like it's time to make that transition, it's time to make that leap, and it's time to stop being surprised when a third-party game runs on Switch. I feel like that's a barrier, and I feel like that's a threshold that we kind of have moved beyond and maybe deserve more than given the other comparable hardware out there that is more than capable of putting out a far prettier version of Hogwarts Legacy, a far less blurry version of Hogwarts Legacy, a far less flat grass flopping in the wind version of Hogwarts Legacy. But at the end of the day, Hogwarts Legacy, it did cast its magic spell. This is a Harry Potter level wizard. This is wizardry and port key games and whoever helped them port they, they did a good job. They used their time well. It took delays, but they delivered a product that runs really well. And I bet they just wanted it to work. 
I bet they wanted it to run really well. I bet they were committed. And it wasn't just about rushing this out. It wasn't just about, oh, it just barely, barely worked. We barely get the okay from certification. No, they, they put time and effort to make this a great port. And I think it's going to be one of the best, biggest sellers, or at least best, biggest recommendations on Switch this holiday season. It's a really cool game. 60 bucks on the eShop or physically, but you will have an extra download. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of gigs of this game, but hey, it pans out. It plays well and it gets a Switch Force seal of approval. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know your take on Hogwarts Legacy and if you plan to pick it up in the comments down below. For now though, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.